Welcome to VTU e Shikshana program. I am Prabhavati, Associate Professor in the Department of EC, BNM Institute of Technology, Bangalore. I will be presenting Module 4 of Advances, Advances in VLSI, 18 EC 71 subject. Module 4 discusses a different procedural constructs or the statements that are allowed in system very log and also some of the routines like tasks and functions in system Verilog. The objective of this particular module is to introduce you to the new constructs and also use them in system Verilog programming, mostly in test benches as well as in designs. Given the complexity of the designs, digital designs as such, and also the size of the digital blocks, the Verilog alone itself is not enough to model uh, the different constructs, okay. And hence, we are uh, using system Verilog constructs which will allow us to model these designs or large uh, designs concisely and then we can uh, execute them or test them or verify the designs with the different test benches. The also system Verilog offers uh, several new operators and procedural statements uh, to the existing ones in the Verilog language that help the process of verification in ASIC design. The operators and statements are similar to the uh, object oriented language uh, C++ and there are some additional enhancements which will actually convey the designer's in intent and helping in to ensure that all software tools whether it is going to be uh, one EDA tool from one vendor or any other vendor. It will interpret all of these procedural statements in the same way. This presentation offers guidelines on how to use these uh, operators and also the new constructs, new constructs in the statements, uh, procedural statements. So, we have uh, in the beginning uh, to discuss the different types of loops that are available in system Verilog. It is loop is an essential programming concept and uh, it is actually used to read and update an array content and execute few statements multiple times based on some condition. System Verilog offers uh, different loop statements such as while loop do while loop and forever loop and for loop and for each as well as repeat. We will be looking at how to uh, write different statements using these loop, equation, uh, loop statements and then see the difference between each one of them. We will look at the first one while loop. While loop is a, a flow control statement that executes the statements repeatedly if the condition holds true otherwise the loop is going to terminate. So, here is the symbolic representation of the while loop. It starts and checks for the condition. If the condition is true then the body of the uh, different statements are going to be executed and comes back again to check the condition. If the condition turns out to be false, then it is going to be terminated. So, the syntax is going to be with the keyword while and followed by the condition and uh, the statements are enclosed within begin and end. The do while uh, loop is also a control flow statement that executes the statements at least once okay and then the condition is going to be checked and if the condition holds true the statements are going to be executed repeatedly otherwise the loop is going to terminate. So, here is again the symbolic representation of do while loop start there is a body and this body is going to be executed first and then checks for the condition and that is given with the while keyword 
and if it turns out to be true, the body is going to be executed repeatedly. If it the condition turns out to be false, then it is going loop is going to be terminated. So, we have the keywords do and while and the do will have the body of the statements or different statements within begin and end and the while is going to be followed by the condition. The for loop is going to be uh, used for array handling most of the times and here it is going to be using three different parts. The first part is going to be initialization where the initial value of the variable is going to be set and it is going to be executed only once. And then the, it is followed by the condition where the condition is going to be or the ex expression is going to be evaluated and if it turns out to be true then the body of the loop is going to be executed else the loop is going to terminate. And every time the condition is met then the update is going to happen that is for the variable whether it is something like increment or decrement. And then the loop, I mean once the update is going to be done again the condition is going to be checked and it does not go back to initialization. So, as you see in the symbolic representation there is a start for the set of the statements and then initially the value of i is going to be set 0 so that it will be executed once and then the condition is going to be checked. If it turns out to be true, then the rest of the statements are executed, and then the variable is going to be updated and again the condition is going to be checked. If it turns out to be true, the body will be executed once again, else if, so, if it turns out to be false, then the program or the loop terminates. So, there is a different version of for loop which is forever as the name suggests the loop is going to run indefinitely and to terminate you will be using a dollar finish system call and or else we can also use a break statement to stop the loop. So, here is an example of such a forever loop. As you see there is an integer which is going to be a, a variable count which is of type int and then I have this forever keyword and then followed by begin and end and I am going to display the value of the count that is the variable integer variable and increment the count every 5 time units and then display it. So, as you see this is going to continue forever until the count is going to be incremented. And as you see since I am not using the break statement here the program is going to be terminated or the statements are going to be terminated after 30 time units which means that this particular statement is going to be executed 6 times in the interval of 5 time units and that is going to be for $30. So, the dollar finish is going to help us to terminate the loop. Then there is an another version of for loop for each and it is going to iterate over the array element unlike for a loop for uh, that is for each loop it does not require initialization or condition or update value. And as you see the syntax is for each the keyword is going to be used followed by the variable or the and how many times it is going to iterate with the keywords begin and end. So, as you see in the example, as you see in the example there is this for each example an array is initialized which is of the type int and it has 5 different elements and the 5 different elements are listed here and for each of the array element uh, in the array you are going to display what is going to be the array element i and array of i and that is going to be ended with end and also the module is going to be 
ended with end module or terminated with end module. So, <coughs> along with these loop uh, statements in the procedural blocks, okay, we have some new operators offered by the system very long and this is something similar to the ones that are used in uh, higher level languages. So, we have increment operator which is given by uh, plus plus and also the decrement operator which is minus minus and this is same as in Verilog language. Uh, but the thing is that this can be used, we, uh, we were not having in Verilog the pre-decrement and the post-decrement or pre-increment and post-increment and pre-decrement and post-decrement forms. So, this is something new and that is offered by the system very long. And the co you can also use the compound assignments associated with the increment and the decrement along with the different logic operators and this makes the code more tighter. So, we will see some of the examples with this okay? and uh, all of them are going to be uh, used either in the for loop or any of the loop statements that we have discussed earlier. There are few tips that uh, should be followed and uh, should be kept in mind and uh, we can use any of these <coughs> increment and decrement statements or assignments with the begin and fork or begin or fork statement and the, you can also put a label so that you can identify which of the block is going to be begin, beginning and end it or you can also use with join and fork. And uh, uh, the increment and decrement operators are also going to be used in blocking assignments or it is something like wherever they are used, the assignments are going to be of type blocking. Uh, and uh, if you are using these increment and decrement operators on variables where there is a non-blocking assignment behavior is required, it should be avoided. This is something that should be taken in uh, mind before coding. And also the system Verilog allows <coughs> mixing of operand data type, you know that it offers bit type as well as logic type, where bit type is going to be two type which is 0 and 1, 4 state type is which is going to be 0, 1 undefined as well as high impedance and we can mix them and this was not allowed in Verilog. Usually the compiler will throw an error if we are mixing 2 state type and 4 state type but that is allowed in system Verilog. And also the declaration in system Verilog for a loop variable can be made within the for loop itself okay? and uh, that eliminates the need to declare the variables in the beginning of the module. And variables that are declared as part of the for, for loop or any of the loop are going to be automatic variables means that they will be given a local storage and they are going to be updated in the local storage. And they are not going to be reserved or it is not going to be written into a static storage. So, here is the list of different increment and decrement operators. So, as you see there is post increment and pre increment. The difference being the we have two variables j and i and i is going to be either incremented or decremented and will be assigned to j. So, in post increment j is assigned with the value of i and i is incremented by 1. In pre increment it before the assignment i is incremented by 1 and j is assigned with the value of new i. And same thing with the post decrement and the pre-decrement. Along with this, there are different assignment operators okay, along with increment and decrement. 
we can combine them with uh, some of the arithmetic operations as well as logic operations. So, some of the arithmetic operations are going to be addition and subtraction and then multiplication and division and also we can check for the remainder with this percentage and equals and then there is uh, ampersand and then or operation and XOR. This is going to be a bitwise AND operation or OR operation or XOR operation and it is going to be done on the value at the right hand side okay, with the left hand sign and then it is going to be assigned to a variable on the left hand side. So, every time this is going to be executed, a new value is going to be assigned to the left hand side. Along with this arithmetic and logical operators, assignment operators, we can also use left shift and right shift. The left and the right shifts can be either logical or it can be arithmetic left shift and arithmetic right shift where the sign bit is going to be retained. All these features are available in the system Verilog. So, here I have an example where there is an illustration of use of for loop. Okay. And also there is uh, an operation uh, wherein statement the sum is going to be operated with the variable that is declared in the for loop. So, as you see uh, there is this initial and then there is a declaration of the array and uh, which is having 10 different elements and if it is of the type integer along with the variables sum and j. So, here there is an uh, variable, another variable i which is all uh, used for loop control here for the for loop and as you see int i is declared within the for loop but not here and uh, that is the some uh, flexibility offered by a system Verilog. And as you see for integer i which is initialized to 0 and i less than 10 which is the condition that is to be met for the for loop in order to terminate or continue execution, i is going to be incremented that is post incremented and this is something that happens with the update of the variable. So, array i will be assigned with i that is 0 to 9. And we add up with the values of the uh, elements in the array. So, I take first the ninth element of the array and assign it to sum and I now assign j is equal to 8 and I use the do while loop in order to get the sum of all the array elements in array okay? and uh, I assign it to sum. So, it means that I take the tenth element add it to the ninth and add it to the eighth and so on with this do while group. And then I display the result as sum is equal to sum which is passed by the variable within the loop do while loop. And then the whole do while statement is going to be end. This may not be end of the end module because you may have some of the other experiment, uh, other statements which need to be run. So, as you see, uh, here is uh, one more thing that you should notice. I have taken, not taken percentage D in this case, but I use what is uh, percentage 4D which actually specifies the width. So, that means you can display 4 decimal digits for the sum and uh, that is going to be taken from the operation that is performed here with all the array elements getting added up and then assigned to sum. Here is an another example of displaying uh, integer variable and uh, here the variable a is declared as integer and the, the display is going to be done within two different lines and as you see I am uh, 
displaying the value of a with increment and uh, while it is going to be uh, greater than 1 or 0 and less than 5, you are going to display this particular uh, uh, value of a and then the display ends with the line again. So, this is an example of a do while uh, loop and as you see uh, when it is run on a simulator with a system Verilog a compiler and a simulator which supports system Verilog constructs. So, you can see the display statement is value of a and uh, it is going to take decimal representation and it is going to be displayed with it starts with 0 and 1, 2, 3 and 4. And since we have given the condition as a less than 5 and do this display until a is less than 5, it is going to display up to 4. And So, here is an another example of a for loop, okay. the same process of what is being done here that is initializing the variable a of int type from 0 and check whether it is less than 5 and display the value of a as we increment it. The same thing is done with the for loop here and as we see the integer i is initialized to 0 and the updating of i with incrementing is going to happen until i is going to be less than 5. So, the condition is i less than 5 and I am going to display the value of i and as you see and again I enclose it with a line here for all the different values of i and it is taking the format decimal and as you see value of i is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, notice the difference the same task is being done with do while uh, loop and as well as for loop. So, this is an example where you can study or learn how to use different loop constructs in order to do the same task. And there are few more uh, extensions to this loop statements. So, it is something like where you want to stop or you want to continue and you want to continue by skipping some of the statements, then we can use some keywords in system Verilog that is break and continue. So, as uh, uh, said here, there are two new statements that help with the loops. First, if in a loop you want to skip over the rest of the statements and do the next iteration, you can use the keyword continue. And if you want to loop the uh, leave the loop immediately, then you can use break. And if the command is just a blank line, then the code does a continue, skipping any further processing of the command and it reaches the end module. And if the command is done, the code does a break to terminate the loop. Okay. So, the same operation, the break operation was done in Verilog using disable. So, this break and continue is an extension of that uh, in system Verilog. So, you see the keywords are break and continue and uh, they are supported in all the loops that what we have discussed so far, while, do while, forever, for and for each as well as repeat. The break keyword gives the termination of the loop prematurely and it is going to be based on certain conditions. Otherwise, you can use the continue keyword in order to jump to the next iteration immediately without executing the next statements after the continue keyword. So, I have an example here which shows the use of break and continue. So, here is a simple uh, routine of displaying the array elements and we use it in two different contexts, one with the break and another one with the continue. So, you have 
uh, for loop for updating the array element. As you see, the declaration of array is done with 10 elements and of the type int. And as you see, you pass the variable i with I mean you initialize i with 0 and until unless it is less than the size of the array which is declared, you go on incrementing i and until then what you are going to do is uh, for every array element, you are multiplying with the array, array element and pass it on to the array. And then uh, you are again doing the same for loop. And you are uh, terminating this when i reaches a value of 6 with the keyword break. And you display the array elements for every uh, element of the array and then display it with a line which separates the execution of the continue statement as well. So I use another for loop now again with the same condition that is i is going to be checking for the size of the array and if it is less until then you are going to continue, uh, I mean increment sorry and if i becomes equal to 6 you are going to continue till the end of the array. So there is a display element uh, statement here which displays the different elements of the array and uh, that is going to be in the given format as given here, okay. So as you see in the first one, you are going to break as i reaches the value of 6 and as you see the i is going to be multiplied with i and then assigned to the array element. So you have if it is initialized with 0, uh, 0 into 0 will be 0. 1 into 1 will be 1, but the second element 2 into 2 will be 4, 9 will be 3 into 3 and 16 will be 4 into 4 and uh, 25 is going to be 5. At this point, i is going to be equal to 6 and the u now follow with the break statement and end it here. And after that, there is a line separation with the display statement which is going to be here and then you continue with the same for loop but this time even if i becomes equal to 6 you have given the keyword continue. So it continues and displays up to all the 10 elements. So array of 9 is being displayed as 81. So here is the use of this particular example uh, demonstrates the use of break and continue and of course the context in which you use the break and continue may be vary but this is how it is going to work. <coughs> Again there is an another uh, demonstration of how to use the continue and break and here it is going to be looking at the commands text file. And if the you have not reached the end of file of this particular file, the file is a variable and it is given with the command f open uh, system command and the file name is going to be command uh, dot commands dot txt which is a text file and you are going to take it as the r uh, file. And if there is a statement uh, and you are reading the different commands, okay. And this CMD is going to be assigned to a variable C. And if the CMD turns out to be a blank line, you can continue. And this is a system Verilog statement that is given with the case statement. It is it, it not with a respect to any of the loop statements that we have discussed so far. So here is a case statement which is again a control loop, looks at different value of a variable and executes. So if CMD turns out to be blank, it will continue. If you encounter in the file done, it is going to break and leave the loop. And of course for the case statement, I have end case. And if you have any other commands, you can give 
what is to be done with those commands by uh, mentioning what is the value and what needs to be done. But here is an example of how to use break and continue with one, uh, two different values of CMD. And of course, you are going to close the file, uh, which is file and with the system command $f close. There is an another extension in uh, case statement offered by system Verilog. Uh, usually in Verilog, it so happens that uh, we use the case statement with every value that a variable can take. Okay. But in system Verilog, but it does not refer to the range of values that a case variable can take in Verilog. System Verilog allows you to use the range of values uh, that a case variable can take. So, as you see, here is an example of that case graduation year, uh, year and that is going to be inside, the variable is inside and the variable values that you are considering is graduation underscore year. And if it is between the range 1950 to 1959, you are displaying a statement, do you like bobby socks or if it is between 60 to 69, you are uh, displaying did you go to Woodstock and 70 to 79, it will display did you dance to disco. I mean, it is going to be with respect to the graduation year and uh, what was the trend in those years. So, this is something that is going to be done with case statement, not with every value, but with a range of values, which is an extension offered by system Verilog for case construct. Along with this, uh, system Verilog provides you to declare certain set of statements which are often uh, executed or they are going to be run many times but have to be uh, specified once as task or function. Okay? And these routines are going to be used in Verilog as well as in the system Verilog. But the extension or the uh, advan I mean, advantage with the system Verilog is that it relaxes the rule imposed by Verilog with task and function, such as a task uh, in Verilog uh, can consume time, but a function will not consume time. And also in Verilog, a function cannot have a delay statement and it cannot have a blocking statement. Okay such as at posage of clock or wait and a function cannot call a task. And also in Verilog, a function must return a value and the value must be used in the uh, assignment statements that follow the function declaration. And in system Verilog, all of these are going to be relaxed and as you see, a function can be called, uh, can call a task, but it can be done so with a thread spawned with the fork and join none statement. So, that is how you can call a task in a function in system Verilog. So, here and one more thing in system Verilog task and function is that we do not have the begin and end statements or keywords to indicate the beginning of the task or function and end of task or function. So, as you see, here is an example where multiple lines is a routine declared as task and it does nothing as in here, but you can do lot many things with the proper syntax statement. Uh, I have dollar display first line, dollar display second line and end of the task and that end of the task is going to be ended with the label multiple lines. Uh, remember that in the beginning I told you 
A routine or statement or any of the loop can be uh, used with the labels and it actually indicates the end or beginning of the particular task or the statement or the loop for that example, for that matter. <coughs> so, you can uh, identify the difference between the task in Verilog and a task in system Verilog. So, noticeably there is no begin and the end here. And also the how to define the different arguments that are passed to the task. In very long, it is going to be more like a verbose type and for every variable the declaration and the direction has to be mentioned. As you see there is a task in very long my task 1 and uh, I need to declare input, output and the type of the variable that is 4 value or 2 value and then end of the task. But in system Verilog, there are more clean statement and uh, declaration of the direction and the type can be done at one go with the variable specified with the task itself. So, as you see, the whole of the lengthy uh, uh, statements have been joined here in system very long and they have been declared within the task uh, statement and it follows that x is going to be 32 bit of type logic and direction is output and y is a single bit of type logic and uh, it is of the direction input. So, this is one of the enhancement in task declaration in system very log. And you have to identify how this is going to help in making our big blocks to look or appear smaller or with the complexity has been reduced. And as you see here is an another example, but there is one more thing that you can see if you are specifying the direction in Verilog, it is going to be more of verbose type which I told you earlier and in system Verilog, it is going to be very sticky and as you see, what comes first is going to be a, having a default argument type that is going to be input and for output, I need to specify as well as the size and the uh, variable type, whether it is two state or four state. So, as you can see the direction has been specified, if not specified it should be taken default direction as input. And also there is one more uh, feature in system Verilog which actually uh, allows you to specify an argument by passing by reference not by copying the value. So, this is done with the help of a keyword REF ref and it has several benefits over input and output and in, in out declarations in Verilog. For example, you have in this uh, particular example that is shown here has an equals compound assignment and uh, that actually calculates the checksum of the array element which is going to be XORed with the previous checksum that has been evaluated. So, as you see uh, this whole operation is going to be done with the compound assignment that is XORed and equals. So, you can see here it is XORed and equated and uh, the new checksum is going to be calculated repeatedly with the for loop where the uh, variable i which uh, actually designates or identifies the array element is initialized to 0 and it is incremented 
until it is less than the size and displays the checksum okay, with the statement the array checksum is the value that you have calculated in the for loop. So, notice here the change is that the array element in this particular function is going to be passed as you see the value has not been specified, but it is actually passed by the keyword reference okay, or with the keyword REF and if you wish to modify then you need not associate it with the constant CONST. Okay. Uh, if you are keeping it constant and if you do not want it to be modified then associate the ref keyword with another keyword constant. And in this case it is uh, the function is written to print the checksum in the given format as in the display statement and it is going to be declared of the type void and it is declared as automatic where the storage is going to be local storage and not static storage. So, this is one enhancement in the system Verilog. Uh, where it should be used that is passing arrays by ref and constant, you should use ref when you are passing arrays to a routine for best performance. If that does not, a routine does not change the values as I told you earlier, use constant ref type. Otherwise, it causes the compiler to check that the routine does not modify the array. And the second benefit of ref arguments is that the task can modify the variable and is instantly seen by the calling function. So, this is something very important and uh, that is done with the ref keyword in declaration of the array element. And this is going to be useful when there are several threads that are executing concurrently, I mean to say all parallelly <clears throat> and you want a simple way to pass the information to all of these threads by doing the operation once. So, this is definitely a very uh, what you say a useful feature that is offered by system Verilog that is passing the arrays by ref and declaring them as constant. And if there is a system Verilog task that does not consume time, it should be declared as a void function. And the void function does not return a value and uh, it can be fault called from any task or function. I mean to say any void task or function should can be called from any task or function. And for maximum flexibility, any debug routine should be declared as void function rather than as a task so that it can be called from any other task or function. So, here is an example of a void function. Okay which actually uh, prints the values of from a state machine. It actually displays the time and what is the state and uh, it actually pa takes the variable from the system time as well as the current state by cur underscore state dot name. So, this is one and you can see that this type of function can be called in any of the print uh, functions and it can be repeated any number of times as it does not return anything but displays as given in the statement. So, in system Verilog if there is a need to call a function and ignore its return value then the variable or the result should be cast as void. And in simulators such as the one offered by uh, Synopsys VCS, it allows you to ignore the return value without using the void syntax. And uh, in language 
reference manual, this is going to be a warning. So, here is an example of ref across the threads. So, notice that I told you, if you are using it in multiple instances and all of them are going to be updated at the same time and they are going to be reflected to the threads which are executing current concurrently. So, here is a task which is reading a bus value bus underscore read and of the type automatic and it actually uh, works on two different uh, variables address and data which is of type 32 I mean of type logic direction input and data is going to be taken by reference and uh, it is going to be of 32 bit size. So, here is a request for reading the bus and as well as uh, value and address. So, there is a bus request and uh, it is given the value 1 and at posage of bus underscore grand, you are passing the address to bus address and you are waiting for data to come from memory and at Posage bus enable, which is an another signal, data will be assigned with the data on the bus, bus underscore data. Now, you release the bus and wait for grant. So, that means you need to make bus request as 0 and on negage of bus grant, you are going to end the task. And as you see the same thing uh, you are referring to the same variables address and data. This is an another thread. So, this whole thing is reading address, updating the bus address and then reading the bus data and passing on to data. Now, it has been read and now the bus request has been disabled. But the thing is that is in an another thread which is actually uh, enclosed between fork and join, you are reading the address and the data with the function bus underscore read which is the same task here and you are beginning the thread to and add to data that means if there is any change in data you are going to display what is read from the bus as the data that you are seeing which has been updated and this is an another thread. Notice that the updation happens in one thread and it is reflected on the other and uh, other thread and that is a completely another block and this is something that is enabled by declaring the data variable as ref. So, notice the advantage of ref here which is offered by system Verilog. Now, how to pass a value for an argument? We are going to look at in the context of task and functions. And what is going to be the default value for an argument? In system Verilog, there are additional controls to the test bench code, but it does not break the existing code. And as you have seen in the example checksum, it may be required to print the checksum of just the middle values of the array without rewriting every call to add extra arguments and this can be done by specific uh, specific default value that is used if an argument is left out in the call. So, you can set the limits low and high you know for the print checksum function which is in this next example. So, as you see this is the function print checksum of the type void and the storage has been declared as automatic and you see that it reads the array by reference and it need not be modified by declaring it as constant and you are declaring checksum or initiating it to be 0. 
you are using the two limits high and low here ok and uh, high is going to be starting with minus 1 and it is going to be the size of the array and every time high is decremented by the size and assigned to high. So, until your i starts from low and reaches up to high, you are finding the checksum and you use the print CSM with the different ways in different ways where it will be printing the checksum as it calculates as A which is default type or you can set the limits 2 and 4 as it is given in the function what is high and low and you can display the checksum from for the array elements 2 to 4 and you can start it from 1 by another variant of the function and you can also declare or print checksum with uh, 0 as the initial low L value and 2 as the high value and if there is nothing with the print checksum an argument is not there or it is missing then it throws a compile error and it is has no default value. So, it actually throws an error at the compilation time. So, this is something an uh, extension that is allowed for the function and you can use the different variants of the function by passing different arguments and you can actually use it in different contexts. Context. Thank you, we will continue in the next class.